My dad, Gus, would make the kitchen sink frittata, which was this big old frittata, using all the meats and cheeses oh. in the crisper drawer, mm -hmm. in the deli drawer of the fridge. So this is inspired by Gus. So I'm turning his kitchen sink frittata into Gus's kitchen sink frittata croissant sandwich. Of course it's it is. a croissata. Oh. A croissata! Oh. A croissata! Oh. Starting with some Italian sausage. You can use breakfast sausage. Again, whatever you have in the fridge. If there's salami, it's going in here. We did some bacon, because we had some bacon in there. We crisp it up, put it to the side, let it drain. Oh and then we cooked through that beautiful, I mean, you got to have chunks of that just beautifully browned sausage in there. All that fat remaining will stay in the pan. I love any sausage, but it makes it a little more breakfasty if you do have the breakfast sauce. And if you, yeah. yeah. And it has all the flavor in it. It's like flavors itself. Oh, yeah. You don't Fennel have to like, add any, not much additional salt in this This is mixture. like meat lovers frittata. Exactly. It's okay if those little bits stay in there. That's just mm. all flavor. While we work on our eggs, a dozen eggs, sometimes two dozen a eggs. A dozen eggs? Sometimes oh, no, that's two a, it's dozen not, eggs. It's a big pan. Sometimes Gus would throw 18 eggs in there. It doesn't matter as I, long as there's a dozen or over. Yeah, it, it, you think it's a lot, but it's not. It's a not that dozen? Thick. I don't know if I've ever made a frittata with a dozen eggs. I love this. This is great, too, but then it needs a little help, too, so we're going to take Pammy's half and half that she uses for her coffee. Oh, yeah. We're we'll going to throw that in there, lighten it up. Jeff, Pam, your mom, Pam. what's she think when uh, Gus is in the kitchen making this? She's, She's long gone. She's, She's with the vodka gone. soda outside in the He's back. Gone. She's gone. Forget the half and half and coffee. Exactly. She's, you know, She's having gone. Pinot Grigio in the basement, probably, <laughs> as far away as possible from the mess. My dad, he believed in the frittata flip, which would be this precarious moment where, in order to make sure the top end of the frittata would get cooked, he'd slide the half-cooked frittata onto a plate, invert it, and then put it back in the pan. It was like an albumin storm around the entire <laughs> kitchen. I have uh, redeveloped it. Still kept the heart of it and soul of it, but we're gonna put it in the broiler to finish it up once we get it Smart set move. here. All right, we shut off the heat just a little bit because I don't want a screaming hot pan. I want it just wispy with steam and smoke, and we're gonna take that, pour that directly in there, oh, and you can see it cradled by all that sausage fat, Jeffrey. You will love that. I don't want to block the frittata. So we don't really want to like brown it too much. But I want to kind of let it set up, and then we'll add all the ingredients, kind of when that bottom 33% of the frittata gets set up. So I don't want everything sinking, but I want a little sinkage. So we'll just start kind of not like just moving to those curds form every so often. And we know it's starting to get set up. We can start layering all the other flavors in there. Just let it go. Provolone, cubes, could be cheddar, could be a metagon. Could be. A metagon. A metagachi. So, and then we got pro, half sharp provolone, half Asiago. Oh, my so God. I want, I want you guys to take a bite of this and not only taste the cheese, but I want you to feel the cheese in your There's eyes. There's, like, as much cheese as there is eggs in this. Yeah, it's a, it's a healthy blend. Yeah. <laughs> now we take that bacon. Protein, it, right? Protein. The sausage is heavier, so you got to throw that in now, right? It's going to sink to the bottom a little quicker than the light <sighs> and airy, wonderful ba crisp bacon that kind of sits on the top there and gets a little extra crispy under the broiler. Is there gonna be like a little parsley or anything? I am Great. gonna introduce some chive later if you play your cards right, Alex. This is going in the oven, <laughs> not in the hot oven, second rack under the broiler. So we get a little color, we get a little direct, and we finish it. it smells so good. So it's perfect. And here we have it. I let it rest for a little bit so it could slide easily out of a pan. But look at that. You oh see what my. happened. Is it a pizza? Is it a frittata? It's a little bit of both, Jeffrey. It's a croissata. It's a croissata. Not yet. So How we're long just... does this cook about? Uh, I, it, you got to keep an eye on it. As soon as, like, I've noticed that if you keep it on that second level, the rack, as soon as it starts to get golden brown, and then turn it out. Oh. So I'm going to build a croissata right now. It's only going to get worse, Alex. I'm sorry. So <laughs> we got it lightly toasted. French croissant here. When I cut the frittata, I like to cut it in half, right? And I'm gonna cut it into a proper triangle that will match up to this. And now we can put on the veg and the schmear and the topping for our croissata, starting with cream cheese. Oh, no, you didn't. So I took some oh, soft no. and true, not whipped cream cheese. I like the real deal block of cream cheese. You leave out for a couple hours. And then I whipped it together with chopped hot jardinera, 
a little bit of honey, and some fresh chives. Wow, getting so vegetables. There is an too. herb. There's a vegetable. There is an herb and a vegetable. Now to just show some, uh, you know, just lighten it up just a little bit. And there's some tomatoes. A fresh moment. Right off the vine, right, you know. From, you know, from the Morrow Gardens. From the Morrow Gardens. And now, when do you get a cheese pull on a frittata? Only when Gus is making it. Look at that, bro. I mean, you just need some marinara, and it's... I know, so. right? Oh, hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. Look at, right on there. A little overhang from the cheese. What? A little overhang from the egg. Oh, my goodness. No bias cut necessary, straight through. I think eh. we need a slow clap for that. I really do. I mean, that can feed a family of four, that one. <sighs> nice wow. cross section. Wow. Perfect smearage. Y'all know how to do it in Chicago. I like the ratio of croissant to egg. It's perfect, right? Slash cheese, sausage, slash cream cheese. If you cheese. can, find these, uh, find these, you know, more oval, ovalesque croissants, less the crescent-shaped croissants. I'm taking a bite, guys. Oh. Oh. Look at that cheese hanging over. Look at that. The egg is almost an afterthought, a, a perfect vehicle for all that sausage and meat and cheese and bacon. And you need that tomato on there to kind of even it out. A little extra jardinera on there for a little pop. Dad, big gosh, I hope I did you proud.